Ladies and gentlemen, President Trump signs four executive orders for economic relief. Here is how they will affect you. Forbes. President Donald Trump signed four executive orders at his golf club in New Jersey after failed stimulus negotiations with Congress. His executive orders cover the following. An extension of the federal unemployment supplement at a reduced rate of $400 per week. A payroll tax holiday through the end of the year for Americans earning less than ten less than one hundred thousand dollars. Extended student loan relief through the end of the year. A renewal of the eviction moratorium to keep struggling Americans in their homes. So how is this an example? I want to know how this is an example of a madman, a tyrant, an authoritarian and a person who is a threat to democracy. This is exactly what any Democrat would do. President Trump is not a Democrat, and he's really not a Republican, which is why he's a great president, which is why, which is one of the reasons I'm voting for him. He's not a John McCain, um, Dick Cheney, Donald Rumsfeld, W. Bush, um... Hillary Clinton, who will be the nominee eventually, you just wait, just watch. Uh, John Kerry, Joe Biden, Democrat, Republican establishment type of politician. He's not going to, he signed a deal to get us out of America's longest running military conflict in late February and early March. Nobody's talked about that. I am like, like literally the only person in all of YouTube that obsesses over that or talks about that or per perhaps even has mentioned that. He has he is reversed. He's on his way to reversing U.S. foreign policy. The past 20 years of failed interventions and just flawed um, regime, well, not just flawed, completely failed foreign policy. He's reversed and he's reversing. He's bringing home Americans or taking them out of quagmires uh, and eventually bringing them home, which is what his foreign policy is about. That's the biggest reason I'm voting for President Trump. But with, with this, he's won re-election. Well, he already won re-election. It ain't going to be Biden because he would steamroll Biden in, in the debates and also uh, in the election. So it would be... <laughs> so. That's absurd. They're not going to go with Biden. The whole thing's a charade. But anyway, Trump signs four executive orders for economic relief. Here's how they will affect you. So tell me again, didn't Bernie Sanders want um, prison reform legislation, criminal justice reform? Trump signed that into law. Wouldn't Bernie Sanders have, uh, one would hope, wouldn't he have given allocated more funding to historically black colleges and universities than President Obama? Well, that's what Trump did. President Trump has given more funding and, and allocated more resources to historically black colleges and universities than any president ever in his first four years, including President Obama. See, nobody knows these things. President Trump signed an executive order combating anti-Semitism on college campuses saying, hey, you know what, if you allow uh, anti-Semitic uh, speech uh, or, or um, if you allow anti-Semitism on your campuses, then you're not going to get federal funding. Um, for, all the, for, all the, um, for all the concern about offensive and dangerous speech, gee, why don't, why why don't left-leaning people care about um, President Trump's executive order combating anti-Semitism on college campuses. Oh, that's right. Oh, that's right. They don't care. We know why they don't care. We know why they don't care. But here, how is this? This is exactly, the Democrats are like, this is our job. This is what we're good at, using government to help people. How dare you? That's why Clinton called a stunt today. Clinton, who's definitely not going to be nominee, is again in the news, what, interviewed today. An extension of the federal unemployment supplement at a reduced rate of $400 per, per week. Um, a payroll tax holiday through the end of the year for Americans earning less than $100,000. Uh, 
extended student loan uh, relief through the end of the year, a renewal of the eviction moratorium to keep struggling Americans in their homes. The people who are, I, I think just the, the response to this pandemic, not from Trump, but from Democrats and media, uh, warrant them never again to be elected, not just executive, but governor, mayors. I mean, look at the top, the states that are suffering the absolute most are Democratic-run states. You could, About seven, five to seven states are around half or over half of all the lives lost in this pandemic and all the cases. You don't hear that. It's in the, it's, it's in the New York Times, simple math. And it's, it's, it's a morbid, you know, really um, horrible type of math. But these are people who have lost their lives from the pandemic. You add the totals up in New York, New Jersey, and God bless the people in these states. They're run by Democratic machines that have run these states into the ground. New York, New Jersey, Illinois, and you could add Michigan, Pennsylvania, you can add Massachusetts is up there in terms of lives lost. You can you look at, at, at about seven, seven Democratic run states. It's it's around half to over half of the lives lost and cases in the entire country. We have fifty states. So this is what Democrats don't realize. We have fifty states, we have three hundred and twenty million people. When Jonathan Swan pretends to care about lives lost at Axios, and he just goes after President Trump, and he, uh, oh, but we have a thousand people losing their lives. Yeah, oh, we have a thousand people. Well, where where are these people losing their lives? Number one, where have they lost their lives the most? Number number two, and we have three hundred twenty million Americans. I'm wondering if if Jonathan Swan at Axios understands we're the third most populous country in the world. Did he expect, look at any flu season chart. It goes down, but it goes down and then up a little bit, then down, up, like any chart. That's just the nature of statistics. You don't, it, doesn't all, it doesn't plummet and never go back up. So, um, so we've already, we, the, the country has already flattened the curve and Democrats and media and and wonderful journalists, you know, their their lives are predicated upon. Well, you know, the cases are up. We have to we have to shut down the entire economy. And then when President Trump um, signs executive orders, you know, renewing a moratorium on evictions, that's exactly what AOC and that's exactly what Democrats have been saying. You know, continuing unemployment benefits, student loan help, relief through student lo- for student loan help, uh, payroll tax, um, holiday. So they're they're upset with that because they don't want that's not that's not exactly how they want the funds to be um, dispersed. But too bad, Democrats, you didn't get in. You didn't. You you did not. Okay, d- Democrats wasted a. And op- yet another opportunity to say, okay, well, we're, we're helping Americans through this horrible time. The, the push, the, the, the response to this pandemic has been absolute economic catastrophe for millions of Americans. How on earth did that keep people safe? I want to know how on earth that kept people safe. And they... They allowed people, they allowed Democrat, Democratic voters, millions to vote in person. Arizona, Illinois, Florida, and Wisconsin in the rain. Nobody talks about this. I wish President Trump would, 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 would like hammer this home, like, you know, would focus on this. They're the biggest hypocrites on the planet. They said, well, if you know, you know what, oh my God, the pandemic, the pandemic. But they allow, they're like, we can't vote in person on election day. You're not going to even get, if it's Biden, which you won't be, because they're not that inept. But if Biden is actually the nominee, which he won't be, it'll be Hillary Clinton. She's the only person who can, she's the best candidate they have. She's the only person who can actually tur- like get voter turnout. The polls they keep on appealing to the same polls that were dreadfully wrong in 2016. They're like, oh, yeah, Biden's polling lead is better than Clinton's. Well, the Clinton's polling lead evaporated, and that they're using the same, they're using the same um, metric, they're using the same standards or the same polls that were horribly off. So, like, <laughs> they're doing it to themselves again, and when they lose again, it will be the most epic biblical meltdown. 
Anyway, the point is that they're, they're, they lost yet another opportunity to say, hey, we're, we're helping uh, people out with government. Their whole thing is, we love government, except, it, except if it's William Barr, then we don't like government, except if it's Trump, then we don't like government. But if, it's, if it's everybody else, Comey and President Obama, we love government. And James Clapper, we love government. But if it's, if it's anything that helps Trump, we hate government. So they're, they're all over the place. They have no message other than they want political power. So, uh, but, but, but the notion that you had to have an economic catastrophe, and you know there's a political motive to this, everyone does. That's 40% of the U.S. GDP, well, close to 40% is New York and, and California. California is doing relatively well, 40 million people, um, but it's, it's, it, it's, there are reasons why it's doing well, not just because it just shut down the economy. But anyway, the um, one reason California is doing well is because it's not as densely populated, not nearly as densely populated as uh, in New York and Illinois and New Jersey. But, but if you look, ladies and gentlemen, if you look at 30% of, 40% of the U.S. economy is New York and California, those two states are shut down. Um, New York, I, I, I understand because governor, the, 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 the governor has completely, completely dropped the ball. I mean, you can't, you can't find a response that's worse to, and that directly impacts the lives of people within his state and de Blasio also for New York City. But they don't get, they're the epicenter of suffering from this pandemic and they don't get any, they don't get any, um, um, any scrutiny from media, they don't get belligerent, uh, you know, journalists badgering them. Oh, well, why did why you know Governor Cuomo? Why did you um, send the sick people to old age homes? Why is why did you do that? You know how many lives lost that caused. I mean, this the governor of New York, his his um, decisions directly impacted the lives. Trump's decisions, they're like, oh, well, his pandemic response was horrible. What did you want him to do? He can't even tell governors to whether, to, he can't tell governors to either open up or um, uh, to open up or close their states, or he can't tell cities or governors to really do anything that they don't want to do. It's the governors and, the, and, and, and uh, governors and the mayors. And in California's case, for example, um, or you just look around the country, there, there are states that per capita are doing really well. California is doing really well per capita in terms of uh, cases and lives lost. There's 40 million people in California. Not long ago, um, you can look at statistics, but some states should be open. Most states should be open. The states that are um, open for business, we could have we could have simply responded to this by saying, "Surely we can't. Surely we can't." Um, uh, start an economic catastrophe, an economic complete oh, a virtual uh, depression. Uh, you know, we surely we couldn't like the mentality should have always been okay. We have this pandemic. What can we do to ensure uh, people people's lives are saved, like wearing masks and social distancing and all these things, while at the same time ensuring we don't have an absolute economic catastrophe. Because we can't have it. That couldn't be part of the equation, right? But Democrats, that was always part of their equation. And in addition to pushing, saying, well, we have to have an economic catastrophe, that's all, you know, gosh. And the media, well, you know, we have to shut everything down. You know, Mad Max, we have to start bartering uh, gold bars for toilet paper. I mean, it just has to happen. They then said, okay, you can vote in Illinois Pennsylvania, Illinois, Florida, Arizona, and Wisconsin, like hypocrites. You can't work, but you can surely vote, wait in line, get drenched in the rain in Wisconsin during the pandemic, getting pelted by hail. I mean, it's this is like cartoonish. It's like, it's beyond hypocrisy. It's beyond, it's it's so over the top, the, the disingenuous nature of the Democratic Party. It's unbelievable, but it should never have been an option on the table that allowed for an economic disaster. Never. You cannot hide behind say, saying, well, we're saving lives. Yeah, you're ruining 
millions upon millions of people's lives economically. What happens to millions upon millions of people if they can't go back, if they, they, they're not working for four, five, six, seven months and they can't go back to their jobs? What happens to, and still the economy is kind of still trying desperately to rebound. But you have Democratic governors who are saying, gosh, you know, I, we just have to, we just have to. And you know there's, an, there's a political component there. Anyway, give me your thoughts below. I'm trying to speak in the round, this is why I speak in a long-winded roundabout you know way i i mean there's the algorithm i have to worry about but it's like we'll look back at this time and we'll say god like what was the what was the logic in an absolute economic catastrophe for the country what was the logic in that did that did that really uh help save people's lives and, and if that's the case also ban cigarettes how many hundreds of thousands of people each year lose their lives in some form or another from cigarettes and smoking and and uh, and alcohol, ban alcohol, 18th Amendment all over again. Um, uh, what else? You know, ban, ban uh, fast food. I mean, you know, because obesity was, you know, a big contributor to uh, people losing their lives. And so, so at what point do you allow society to function and address pandemics in logic in a logical reasonable manner that's not a partisan thing you don't just have one person uh talking and and uh you know what shut down the entire economy give me some more chlorets uh you shut it down shut it down shut it shut it down shut down the entire economy why not it's to say uh, helping people helping people one uh one layoff and one uh, uh unemployment check at a time uh, we got to sh shut down the entire economy. What, what's the problem? Okay. And, uh, you know, pretty soon you got to wear space suits and uh, no problem. What's the problem? You can't just give the keys to the economy to well-meaning, you know, good people. Not saying they're bad people. But you never asked, uh, you never asked, what's his name, about voting in the primaries. Because he would have said, nah, you probably shouldn't vote in the rain. Or maybe, he, who knows, because they asked him about protesters, and he was like, I, I, I can't tell you anything about that. But uh, if you want to ask me about actually working and going to work, yeah, yeah you shut it down, shut it, shut it down. So, <laughs> Democrats, media, everybody knows what's going on. President Trump's going to win re-election, especially because... Uh, these four executive orders are exactly what Democrats were supposed to do. <laughs> through legislation. Give me your thoughts below. Subscribe to H.A. Goodman's other channel right now.